Market cycles are a fascinating thing. Today we're going to dive into a framework all the way back from the 1970s that gives us an overview about different considerations of what to buy and sell at different stages of the market cycle. Of course, as we know, the markets do move in cycles. They don't just move in a straight linear manner. When we're looking at things on the day to day in a granular aspect, it can seem like they're moving in almost random gyration, sometimes up, sometimes down. But we move into different stages of the cycle. Yes, sometimes we only notice this looking backwards with hindsight, but it is worth noting that they do move at different times. And if we can get a grasp and understanding of where we currently sit in the cycle, this can help to inform our d decisions and also our assumptions about where things may head from here. So to really dive into that, as we know, markets move into phases. This is a commonly discussed and referenced uh, theory called the Wyckoff theory of distribution. Four different phases in this theory here, the accumulation, mark up and mark down, and then the distribution areas. This is one that most people are familiar with, and so I wanted to utilize it to ground our discussion, to base our discussion with today. But the theory that we're gonna be speaking about is a different one. It's actually called the Four Quadrants Framework. This was popularized and developed by Charles Gave. He's the founder of Gavical Research. He's a well-renowned economist and developed this all the way back in the 70s. So Charles Gave realized that asset classes moved on two major macro variables. He's in the news and at the forefront of discussion at this stage as well growth and inflation. It's always a trade-off as we know, and this is what central banks are currently trying to navigate through with this soft landing. How can they curtail inflation without affecting growth too dramatically so that they don't send us into potentially a recession or into a significant slowdown? As you know, we've had a lot of discussions. If you listen to many of the different analysts and economists, there's, conject uh, there's contention at the moment about whether we're in just a conventional mid-cycle slowdown, or perhaps is this the end of the multi-year bull run that we've seen. But this four quadrants framework for portfolio construction by Charles Gave highlighted four different quadrants with inflationary boom, inflationary bust, disinflationary boom, or disinflationary bust. And this is how it looks laid out. As we can see on the Y axis, prices moving higher, that's the inflationary pressures, which we're all familiar with. And then on the X, X axis, the economic activity, obviously GDP is one of the easiest determinants of this to look at, but there's a range of different economic prints that we can look at as proxies for this, whether it's manufacturing data, retail sales data, even consumer confidence, a range of different areas that we can look at to get an understanding about where the economy is currently positioned. And so when we have a look here in the inflationary bust period in that top corner, that's where the majority of people in consensus would probably highlight that we're in at the moment. We're seeing inflationary pressures throughout the economy. But of course, we're seeing a slowdown at this stage. Of course, we're starting to see some potential pitfalls in some of the economic data. We still do have a resolute and strong labor market and earnings were pretty strong over this past period as well when there were some concerns about whether we'd see a raft of earnings downgrades. However, the question from here is not just where we're currently positioned, but more importantly, where are we heading? Of course, there's conjecture about, are we heading into a disinflationary bust period as inflation starts to come down, as rates move higher? Potentially, will we move into the next boom part of the cycle if this is the mid-cycle slowdown? But what's fascinating here is, as you can see, in the inflationary bus corner of this framework that Charles gave popularized, they have buy cash in the safest currency, sell financial assets. We've seen that flight to the dollar over this past period as that safe haven asset. But then it'll be fascinating to see what happens in this next period. It is worth noting that over the past decade, we've really been in this disinflationary boom period we know that over the past few decades, we've seen globalization spread. Obviously, as a result of that, there's been that race to the bottom. We have seen a significant amount of uh, different competitive pressures flowing through in the economic picture. Of course, the prolifer proliferation of technology as well, that's a disinflationary pressure. But where will we head moving forward from here? I'd love to know your thoughts on it all. So drop in a comment below. Firstly, do you agree that we're in this inflationary bust period? And then what do you think is up ahead in this next stage of the market cycle? We've just dropped this second channel too, so make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on and hit that like button. So a few things to note. Firstly, frameworks are guides, they're not absolute. Obviously every period is different on the markets, every cycle is different and history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes. I'm sure you would have heard that old adage before. We often identify cycles with hindsight. It's a lot easier to be able to look backwards and say, oh, that was the stage of the cycle we're in. But when you're in the midst of it, when you're in the eye of the storm, it can be difficult to take that step back and have a think about, okay, where are we actually currently positioned? But if we can do that successfully and consistently, that can be a real leg up and a bit of an informational advantage uh, when we're looking at the markets. 
where we're heading is also a function of our assumptions. Every investor on the market has got different assumptions that is guided by their worldview and where they think things are heading. But it's worth noting that there isn't consensus on this. Some people think at the moment that we've got this resolute labor market, the economy is in solid shape. Of course, there's some uncertainties, but actually we're ready to move into this next stage of the cycle. While others are thinking the sky is about to fall in, this is just the first leg down, there's more uncertainty ahead and nobody knows with any certainty exactly where things will head. We have to wait for things to evolve, for more data points to come through and to be able to make our assessments. But what has been interesting is there was that discussion of fear about would we start to see earnings downgrades coming with the past earnings season? We haven't yet. We did see a lot of companies decline to provide earnings guidance and forecasts for this upcoming period just because of the macro uncertainty. But what we did see consistently throughout was that companies with pricing power had the most resolute earnings. In this inflationary environment, they were able to pass through those cost pressures uh, and those rising prices onto consumers. We didn't see too much of a significant downgrade in terms of demand. And so earnings were able to stay uh, resolute as a result of that. So it'll be fascinating to see if that's maintained. It's an interesting discussion. Let us know your thoughts. A big thank you for joining us. For now, stay well. Check out another video on the channel and happy investing.